Welcome back. You're watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei, on CGTN. Born in Shanghai, admitted to Shanghai Ballet Dance School at the age of 11, her ballet performance is legendary in the ballet world. She is the only Asian chief executive of the San Francisco Ballet and one of its prominent lead actors in the dance troupe. She was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by the American Dance Magazine and was honored as the Asian hero on the cover of The Times at the age of 26. Her, her name is Yuan Yuan Tan. And she is one of the best ballerinas of the world. We had an interview with her, but take a look at this first. A legend of the ballet world. From a talented girl to a ballet queen, Tan Yuan Yuan spent decades earning international awards and made the world behold this exquisite oriental face. At the age of 11, Tan Yuan Yuan was admitted to the Shanghai Ballet Dance School. While her father disapproved of her choice, her mother encouraged her to pursue her talent. So, they tossed a coin to decide her fate. The result was yes! But Tan began to learn dancing nearly a year later than her peers. This prompted self-doubt to the point she thought she was an ugly duckling. The ugly duckling eventually became a white swan. Through her hard work, at the age of 14, Tan won the first international prize in Finland, and one year later, she won the gold medal at the fifth international ballet competition in Paris. When most 18-year-old girls are still unaware of their true calling, Tan Yuan Yuan, who studied at the Ballet Academy of Dance in Stuttgart, Germany, had already received the signing invitation from the San Francisco Ballet. In only three years, Tan Yuan Yuan jumped from the solo dancer to the principal dancer. For nearly 30 years, she used her youth to perform almost all of the classic ballets. She is a well-deserved ballet queen. Even though she is 40 years old, she is still 100% full of passion on stage. She is not only a dancer, but also an international artist who made contributions to cultural exchange and exposed the world to Chinese ballet. 20 years on the stage. For anyone doing anything for 20 years, it's respectful. Not to mention ballet dancing. Um, at the beginning, I don't think it's possible because <laughs> usually we, as a ballet dancer, due to the injuries and uh, like a uh, workload, we have uh, a lot of unexpected things happened in life as well. Um, so uh, sometimes we retire at the age of 30, 35. I extend my career by pretty far as a dancer. possible still to challenge always yourself? Um, for me, sometimes it's very tiring and I want to get some rest mm -hmm. or just doing a little bit less. But somehow when I showed up in the studio and I start practice and I can go backwards, I have to just go forward. All the way? All the way. And on stage I put 120, not 100. Sometimes I, I just so why are you doing this to yeah, yourself? Exactly. Um, but it just happens naturally. Even though I want to hold back to do a little bit less, then it's impossible for me to do so because I really get used to the intensity and 120 yeah. for over 22 years. I remember in an interview you were saying, well, it's been 20 years. I feel so lucky that my body is still responding to me. On a daily basis, um, at the beginning, uh, when I wake up, I just check where it's feel pain, and then sometimes it got like a very stiff joint, and a sore neck, what sore do you muscles. Do with this? 
Well, um, I just go to the studio and warm up, take a very hot shower to let the, the muscle relax a little bit, and uh, I do some kind of uh, you know, uh, exercise to warm up the muscles and the joint. And, uh, but you, know, you sometimes have to dance through the pain. When you're young, recovery time is shorter. Short. But when you're getting older and then have more intensive um, workload, then you probably recover much, much slower. slower than when you're young. So actually, it's always a mixture of both pleasure, it's something that you really like, you really yeah. enjoy, and you shine in it, and also pain at the same time, always a mixture. It's always a mixture, and it's beautiful suffering. The competition, just to think about it, on the ballet stage, mm -hmm. is fierceful. Yes. You've been there 22 years, every year there are new dancers, very talented, very physically challenging, could be on the stage and every time they could be coming with an extra portion of different cultures so how do you look at that situation and at the same time how do you grow mm -hmm. all the way even though you are extremely successful already. Uh, when I was young, I faced the same and pain. And you're still young, my dear. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> well, yeah. When I'm younger, <laughs> um, when I first time joined the company, I was the youngest solos of the ch company, San Francisco Ballet Company history. How old were you then? I was uh, 17, wow. and 17 and a half. And I got promoted when I was 19, mm -hmm. become the youngest uh, Chinese ballerina ever happened, like in, in the history of ballet world, is the youngest principal. Indeed. Yes. So that load of jealousy is amazing. I was there I w without speak any English, and I had to face that. So at the beginning, I was very upset, and I was like, why they treat me like this? Mm -hmm. And then I realized this is like the, the, the real world. It's not part of the game. The part of the game. If you're good, but just believe yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I called, I called my parents, and I was like, oh my God, I don't, I want to come back because this is really difficult for me to be here. At the time, your parents were in Shanghai. Yeah, it was still in, in, in Shanghai. In, in, in Shanghai, yeah. But my mom told me just like do your, to do the best that you can, and then everything else will be solved. Mm -hmm. So I did it what she said, it, yeah. it works. So I, I just like really just home and the studio yeah. stage back home. So that's my routine. And then that's for five years. I don't really have a lot of friends, especially in the company, but uh, I think they noticed my talent. And also, of course, the director gave me a lot of uh, uh, opportunities. So I conquered every single one. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, I showed it to them. And showed on stage. That's the, the most, in Chinese say, new, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> the most you know, it worked out. Um, so I think I believe in my ability mm. and with all the competition and I see I've been through and I see now all the young dancers wanted to become a star. Uh, it will take time but when on this uh, very rocky road you have to be mentally strong. Right. You do have to um, not just like few performances but all the way from the studio. Even when you change your clothes um, in the dressing room, mm -hmm. you have this mindset, okay, this is a new start. It's kind of like meditation at the beginning, so like, okay, I changed this outfit, I am a ballerina now, and I needed to work uh, the best that I can. Um, every single step, every single minute, make right. it very important. How did you manage to find your style? You know, I'm sure through a lot of hard work, people get better technically, mm -hmm. but the style thing, and the spirit mm -hmm. of a dance artist is very hard to find. How did you, when was the moment for you to realize, huh, that's probably it? I think the first feelings when I was 15 in Finland, Heresy Singi uh, competition. At that time, I was only 15, and uh, that was the first experience that I was traveling abroad, like foreign country, and see a lot of foreign dances and I was like wow ballet can be like this because when I was in the school I was very shallow just uh, to uh, do what the teacher 
tell me to do. Only the classics, right? Only the classics. Mm. A little bit of contemporary, but I wouldn't say it's contemporary, just like not wearing tutus. I see. <laughs> so it's not like a really like use your body to tell the story. I'm just like a copycat to copy what is right. They, I think it's the right thing to do, or the teacher thinks it's the right thing for me to mm -hmm. do. So I don't have a uh, personality when I'm dancing. Then I saw a lot of uh, uh, dancers are older than me, and then I was like, wow, there's something really interesting. Mm -hmm. Why I cannot do this? Why, what they are thinking when they're dancing? So I was just like very, um, very uh, curious about it. Then I won the silver medal at the first competition. I was 15. I was like, oh, okay, that's good. But when I was doing the performance, I already finished the competition just a performance. Then I relaxed. I was like, oh, maybe I can just like do a little bit softer here and there and just listen to the music. That moment, I think, opened my mind. After that, here After we that, go. Like yuan yuan. I, yeah. <laughs> After that, I just like really still training with the teacher and in the school. Then I think uh, really opened my eyes is in when I was in Germany studying and I was in San Francisco because I see a lot of things like different things that I did not learn in the school. So seeing it, yeah. going there, yeah. experience it does help tremendously. Oh, I have to say if I uh, didn't do that, I won't be dancing like that way. Mm -hmm. And you were saying earlier in another interview that when you are doing your characters on the mm -hmm. stage, you know that you have become them, mm -hmm. but you are not imitating them. Yes. How is that possible? I mean, as we women grow, mm -hmm. we seem to be much more enriched by our lives and experiences. And I guess for dance artists like you, mm -hmm. it's particularly true. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? Can you help us to understand Put that? yourself into this role and then just think how this character are thinking. For example, I did this like amazing piece called The Little Mermaid. Hans Christian himself is the mermaid mm -hmm. because he has so much pain in him. And that's why he wrote in the book saying that she can't, she, her voice is is taken away because that's what she, she have now is the human leg instead of a beautiful tail. So she cannot speak. It's like a lot of things that Hans Christian Anderson cannot tell the world that he's gay, that he's in love with the young master. Mm -hmm. So that's why he wrote this story that Little Mermaid is him. So what if I'm him in a Little Mermaid? Mm -hmm. How I feel, like the pain you cannot express but the pain is in here so what your body language should do it's not like this this is happy and you have to be like really tight and then uh, it's not angry but suffering so in this way that your body language completely changed and then body cannot talk so that's only the uh, it's our tool and it's a very powerful tool exactly to tell the story with the music itself. and understand got the chance to be able to see your your performance Thank I'm you. sure he will be dazzled the other hand Giselle yeah very dramatic story very dramatic 
and personality goes ups and down with the story. Well, uh, I have to say Giselle, also uh, one of my favorite. a lot of work. Yes, uh, one of my favorite uh, role. It's not only because the technically it's very difficult. You have to be precisely with tip. Uh, difficult variations, mm -hmm. solos, and then part of this. But uh, for me, uh, to create Giselle, um, every year that I'm, when I get older, it's more interesting because. Tell me about it. It's not so difficult to become innocent like a oh. country girl, right? But the difficult is transition when she find out she got cheated mm -hmm. from the Prince Albert, and then she go get get mad. And she have already had very uh, heart condition mm -hmm. like uh, in the beginning, but how she felt it and she felt betrayed and how angry she is and how upset she is and then triggers the madness and then she go there's a scene it's mad scene mm -hmm. it's very interesting because you only have this certain music only a very little time mm -hmm. to express her pain and then how to say it's uh, this is like end of the world That's right. for a young girl and how she is really heartbroken but the, at the end she still reached out f to him because she still loves him deeply and that uh, transformation that stage by stage yes. yes yes so it's very detailed but mm -hmm. you have to really do a lot of behind scenes like work on your own mm -hmm. and then to be in the studio alone to know a little even to to get to the details of little fingers, how your hands gesture, like you you, you if you cover the mouth like this, it's not like you have to cover the mouth a little bit, like you can see that it's a little bit of things that make a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Were you always in the studio thinking about those details by yourself? Yeah, I feel more comfortable instead of people telling me to do so. Mm. Or the coach can be like walking and say, oh, this is nice, but maybe if you do a little bit of this, it will look better. Mm. So I will take it, the advice and then work on that. I was like, okay, this will work. Or every time I uh, are doing things slightly different. Right. So that's why my Giselle, uh, like I think two years ago in the, uh, the uh, National Performing Arts Center, uh, that was it was a huge, medical. huge success. I, I think it was uh, magical. I have to say that probably my best Giselle ever. That day, I was just open myself and I just let things happen. I felt I'm really light as a feather, and there's no weight mm -hmm. on my on my shoes. I just like flying across stage. So I think this feelings you really can't happen all the time. If there's once. And this is already a miracle. And I'm very glad that the miracle happened here in Beijing. It's already a blessing, isn't it? And still today, people are talking about that performance, Yuan Yuan. Really? really? Yes, okay. they are. And they were remembering very well the 20th anniversary, both of the San Francisco Ballet yes. and also your performance in China. People here are just extremely proud of this Chinese ballerina called Yuan Yuan, yes. who eventually becomes such a world-renowned, you know, dance artist. But there are many other Chinese girls that are learning ballet mm -hmm. or try to be on the international stage mm -hmm. in different art forms. Do you have some advice for them? I mean, your days are much more difficult mm -hmm. because you've never seen the outside world. Mm -hmm. But of course, today's China is different. But I guess there's something that has to be consistent mm -hmm. and would be helpful to them. I feel I was not really polluted by outside the world. I'm That's kind of like a word. I kind of just like a be myself. I'm very happy just stay home doing like, you know, watch a movie, relax my body and the next day think about oh what I should work on for the programs and then steps. Mm. And for a dancer you have to take care of yourself. You cannot go out clubbing party too much because it will affect your performance or your training. Be on the top. As a dancer or artist, you're like a, a monk. You know, life is short, as they always say. Uh, particularly when you are extremely good in your profession. But at the same time, be able to relax yourself, to make it open. It's another thing. So that's a balance that I was thinking about every day, but I guess for you will be even more. Yes, yes. You're absolutely right, what, uh, what you said. And then also the... Uh, 
earlier you talk about the competition. Yeah, I mean, because we're always in this intensive like uh, art form. Absolutely. And I, I was the the age we grow in age, and then uh, the body probably not recover as fast and not at can be too active as before. But what you can do is you don't compete with young, don't compete with the others. They're individual, they're different. Mm. And what you can compete is yourself. Absolutely, 100%. Such a pleasure, Yuan Yuan, to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. Thank my you honor. so much. All the best, my dear. Thank you very <laughs> much.